Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Today I'm going to do number one on the new general curriculum math subtest. It involves scientific notation. Scientific notation we use as a way to represent really big numbers and really small numbers. So get ready for that in this video. I'm going to start by reading over the problem and then we'll work through some of the math behind it. Let's start. As I read it over, visualize what the scenario is and then we'll get to the math. Here we go. Number one. A researcher estimated that there were 8 billion grains of sand per cubic meter on one particular beach. If the mass of one of these grains of sand is approximately 3.5 times 10 to the negative 7th grams, what is the approximate mass of one cubic meter of sand on this particular beach? Hmm. Read that to yourself. Pause it right now. Read it over. Read it over and look for the central image. The central, what's the central image? Well, the central image is your anchor. Everyone circle the word sand. 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 This problem has to do with sand. It tells us in the first line that 8 billion grains of sand, lots of sand can, can fill up a cubic meter. All right? Can you imagine that? 8 billion grains of sand fit into a cubic meter. Now, a cubic meter Maybe you're not that familiar with it, maybe you are. It's over three feet by three feet by three feet. It's a really big box, if you want to think about it. It's like the size of those boxes you get when you're moving. It's, you, it's very, very big. So, so we're talking about a really big box that can be filled up with eight billion grains of sand. All right, that's what that first sentence says. Second one says that the mass of one of those grains of sand, just one of those little grains of sand, it has a, a mass here of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 7. That's really tiny. So we got a lot of grains of sand in the box, but they're the very, very tiny mass. And the question is, approximately, what is the mass of all those grains of sand in this box? So we're trying to find out what's the mass of this box filled with the 8 billion grains of sand if we know that each one is made up of 3.5 has a mass of 3.5 times 10 to the negative seventh. Now, this means that we're going to have to take the 8 billion and multiply it by the mass of each one of those grains of sand. Now, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do a traditional way, but know that there's just there's tons of ways to do this math out. Okay, so uh, let's start with a traditional way. Since uh, the answer choices are in scientific notation form. I'm going to go to the 8 billion and I'll write that in scientific notation form. So here, I put my uh, decimal uh, right before the first zero. I'm going to count up the spaces before the 8 digit and see how much we get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spaces. So I can rewrite 8 billion as 8 times 10 to the 9th power. So this is 8 billion grains of sand, and I'm going to multiply it by 3.5 times 10 to the negative 7th. To do this, I'm going to just set up a, a math problem here where I multiply these two out. I'm going to start with the 3.5 here and the 10 to the negative 7th here. I'm going to put that on the top. I'm going to multiply that by 8 times 10 to the 9th. This is going to be a double dual multiplication problem. Now here's how I'm going to do the calculation now. Just draw a little line here so we don't mix these up too, too soon. I'm going to multiply this side out, and I'm going to multiply this side out, and what the, whatever the answers are, and then I'm going to multiply those answers out. And that's going to be the, the, the final uh, product of these two values. Let's start, let's start by doing this first side. Do it with me. Uh, 3.5 times 8. Well, I'll move this decimal over here to make it 35 times 8, and then I just got to remember to move it back. All right, here we go. 8 times 5 is 40. Drop the 0, carry the 4. 8 times 3 is 24, plus the 4 is 28. Since I moved it over once to the right here, I got to move it back. So at the end of the day, this side is 28. Now I have this side to do. So whenever you have ex numbers with exponents like 2 to the 1st times 2 to the 2nd, do you notice how these two numbers, they have exponents, but they also have the same base? Well, when your numbers have the same base, the product of this is going to be the same as 2 
And what I do is I just add the exponents together. So when the bases are the same, you keep the base the same and you add the exponents. The answer would be 2 to the third. So 2 to the first times 2 to the second is the same as 2 to the third. Okay, let's apply it to this one right here. <laughs> 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the ninth. What do they have in common? Well, the bases are the same, so I keep the base the same and I add the exponents. Negative 7 plus 9. Negative 7 plus 9, what's that? That's 2. So this boils down to 10 to the second power. 10 to the second power is 100, or 10 times 10, which is 100. So this whole side of the equation here, 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the 9th, boils down to 100. 28 times 100 is 2,800. Looking back at the answer choices, I don't see 2,800 or 2,800 grams. So what that means is I got to go to the the 2,800 here, and I got to represent in scientific notation. So I got to do what we did with the 8 billion. I got to move it over the decimal over one, two, three spaces, and rewrite this as 2.8 times 10 to the third power. The answer would be D. There's lots of ways to do this problem, but this is definitely one of the ways. Here's another way. Going back, boiling it down, back to our original image. When I read this over in the beginning, and just to use some basic common sense, that this, this cube here, if it's a meter by a meter by a meter, it's going to be really big. And to give a, sort of to give some proportion here, I'm going to draw a, a person next to this three foot cube here. A person is what? Five, six feet tall? And this is the box here that's three by three by three. So this is one of those really big boxes that you would get if you're moving out or, or moving something. It's a really big box. And imagine this big box filled, filled with all these grains of sand. It's going to be pretty heavy. Can we at least agree this big box filled with sand is going to be heavy? Because if that's the case, the mass is going to be, we're going to look for a mass out of these options that's very high. Now let's look at the options and let's just use common sense here. First, Anything to the 0 power is always 1. So 2.8 times 10 to the 0 power is just 2.8 times 1. That's 2.8 grams. That, that hardly weighs anything. So I'm going to cross that out because it doesn't make sense for this big box to be 2.8 grams. What about this one? 10 to the first is just 10. 2.8 times 10 is 28 grams. Again, that's less than a candy bar. And there's no way this big box weighs a candy bar. Let me cross that one off. See how I'm just using common sense to eliminate A and B? Let's do these next two at the same time. 10 to the second is 100. 10 to the third is 1,000. 2.8 times 100 is 280. 2.8 times 1,000 is 2,800, which is our answer. Just by kind of working through this problem, I might be able to uh, eliminate A, B, and C. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day, team. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, team. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016 Teacher Workshop Series. This year, Go Academy is holding a whole new round of workshops in math, science, English, and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL, and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, Florida, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, and a couple other states. Check out our workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.